Curry College began as a school of expression and oratory on Beacon Hill in 1879. Theater, music, and voice courses dominated its first decades of existence. Not long after Curry's move to Commonwealth Avenue, a new wireless form of communication was beginning to take shape, radio. Stations like Boston's WBZ signed on the air, and a new industry was born. Over at Curry, students were already using phonograph recording machines to learn voice and diction, helping students lose their famous Boston accents. With radio still in its infancy, Curry's founders took a bold step. On November 9, 1932, the college began a series of broadcasts on radio station WLOE out of the Hotel Bellevue in Boston. Early broadcasts consisted of plays, impersonations, and readings. This would continue throughout the 1932-33 academic year. The school, perhaps without even knowing it, had become one of the first colleges in the country to offer students broadcasting. Soon broadcasting courses started to fill the college curriculum, and a reputation for broadcasting excellence was being shaped. One young man, Roger Allen Bump, would come to Curry to study and learn radio news. I mean, we really had hands-on attention. Uh, if you raised your hand, you get a complete answer. Don't see me after the class, because a lot of the people who were teaching were college people uh, going for their doctorates and so forth, young people. While the Curry campus was small, just a brownstone with a few rooms, Roger and the other handful of broadcasting students were learning big-time skills. Practitioners from local radio stations came in to teach, too, like Neil Wallace of WEEI. And he taught me uh, how to, uh, to recognize a news story. And he'd tell, whenever he covered one, he'd come into class, he'd be exuberant, he'd tell us all about how he did it. He'd say, wow, that's great, you know? Rather than, well, on page six, you know, it'll tell you how you're doing it. No, you gotta have the people there who tell you the story. In the 40s and 50s, the broadcasting program was now well established in New England, and Curry's reputation was growing nationwide. More courses were being offered, some quite funny today. How about learning how to apply television makeup? The college catalogs at the time touted the state-of-the-art equipment students were learning on, and more and more students were entering real broadcast careers. Roger Allen Bump had moved on too, becoming one of Boston's premier radio news anchors. He eventually, though, came back to Curry, this time to teach, becoming the mentor for hundreds of students, students like Fred DeMarco. He became vice president of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting in the United States of America. <laughs> it's an, Itali an Italian kid who couldn't pronounce spatula. I gave him the commercial for Jordan Marsh Housewares. He, he, he's reading it beautifully and he says, and spatulas are on sale. And I stopped and right in the middle, and that's what I, they hated me for that sometimes. I'd say, a spatula, what the hell is a spatula? Come on, Fred. And from then on, we called him the spatula kid. And <laughs> in the late 60s, a young man named Bob McNeil was searching for a broadcasting school after finishing up his sophomore year at a junior college. He knew about Curry and went to meet with Roger. All of a sudden, he started talking about me. He said, who are you? Who are you? I said, what have you done? Where have you been? What are your goals? You know, what do you, what do you, what do you want to do? And at that moment, uh, I realized that this was going to be the right place for me because here was a teacher who cared about his students and cared about what we were doing and what we wanted to achieve. Bob was part of a group that laid the groundwork for what you see at Curry today. First, with a carrier current radio station which transmitted through wiring around campus, known as WVAC. We all took it seriously, I mean, because it was the voice at Curry. WVAC was a huge success, and in 1975, the carrier current station was history, and WMLN-FM was born. Professor Alan Frank arrived to carry the broadcasting program into the modern era, his students earning major awards along the way. So we entered our first time with public affairs and sports broadcasting, and we won, and continuously won uh, the Associated Press Award for uh, uh, college radio stations in the metropolitan Boston area and kept cleaning up with uh, public affairs and sports and various news events. Our election coverage became notable. 
Today our broadcasting program also includes television and our students are learning the craft of broadcasting in radio and TV facilities that are among the best in the country. It's a testament to the founders of our college some 75 years ago. It makes me proud to be able to say I'm part of this and have been part of it for more years than I like to admit, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's a great legacy and we should all be very proud of that legacy. You look at 75 years ago and you think about broadcasting in its infancy, uh, just, just the beginnings of it uh, during that period, and the fact that we were there, we were part of this, uh, this whole plan uh, that uh, Curry College, as it was then, uh, was certainly uh, almost in a, in a visionary state where we saw into the future and realized that this wasn't just a lark that was a passing phase that was going to disappear, but it was actually something that was going to be something that would be part of our future and future generations. And Curry College is doing exactly what it planned to do 75 years ago. What began in the 1932-33 academic year has blossomed into a broadcasting program known Coast to Coast. Alums work in hundreds of communities across the United States. They're in small town radio stations and at national television networks. They work as afternoon DJs, TV news anchors, sports announcers, general managers, and sales executives. They are our heritage, and we honor all of them tonight. My kids are special, and uh, they, don't, they, they know it, and if they don't know it, I tell them. I call them.